Hello, everyone. Happy to be talking to you via video. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Dr. Patricia Hilliard, and today we're going to do a little practical application for a verse or a thought that we probably all know but have applied in a different way. So when I was outside planting seeds, what else are we doing? We're, we're in the coronavirus. We're trying to do whatever we can do at home. And I'm outside, and I'm planting some seeds with Caleb. And I had some strawberry seeds there, and I had a couple of flower seeds, and he's kind of sprinkling them in the little pot that we're planting them in. And in my spirit, I heard the Lord say, listen to your seed. That kind of took me by surprise. Um, I would have thought, look at your seed, pay attention to your seed, but listen to your seed kind of caught my attention in a different way. So we finished planting the seeds, and I went inside, and I'm like, I really don't know what this means, Lord, listen to your seed. So I'm sitting there, I'm thinking about it, and the two verses that came to my mind are Genesis um, 1 11. I'm going to read it to you so we get it correct. And then God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself. And if that makes you sit and think for a minute. And then the next verse that came to my mind was a very strange verse um, out of Leviticus that I can remember just not too long ago reading because I've been um, studying the Passover and um, the Levitical laws. So this one came to my mind. You must obey all my decrees. Do not meet two different kinds of animals. Do not plant your field with two different kinds of seed. Leviticus 19.19. 19. That gave me a time to sit and think, okay, what connection is there between the fact that God said all of the things that I am going to give you in the, in the world, all the, all the things that are going to grow, they have the seed for reproduction in themselves. The seed is in itself. And then the instruction, don't plant two different kinds of seeds in your field. Old Testament, okay. Well, Lord, how does this fit now? What, what is there for me to learn from this? And I think a scripture that would probably automatically come to all of your minds, because it's something we are pretty familiar with, is that we should not be deceived because God already says, whatever a man sows, that also will he reap. So we're going to reap what we sow, and I need not to look at my seed, not to watch my seed, but to listen to my seed. Okay, right back to, to, to word one, how to study the Bible, word 101, listen to my seed. So what is the seed? The seed is the word. The seed is always a word. Um, see, Matthew, Mark, Luke all tell the story of the sower. And uh, so, and clearly when Jesus interprets that parable for his disciples, he says, the seed is the word. So all through the Bible, the word is equal to the seed. It's seed we sow. Okay, so if I have to listen to my seed, oh, I get it, Lord. I have to be listening to my words. Now, I don't think that's a new concept for us. I think we have pretty much, if, if we've been uh, Christians for a while, especially if we've attended New Hope, if we've been to the School of Ministries, if we've been to any conference, um, maybe any of you hearing this that are not, haven't been able to do any or all of that, the word and paying attention to your words we've all learned is so important because your word is a seed and that seed is going to bring forth a fruit. So that's just a little background as to how God began this study with me. 
So I'm starting to think, what, you know, what, word, what word am I supposed to listen to? The Bible's full of words. Um, the, the word of God. It is the word of God. And there's words of wisdom. There's words of knowledge. There's words of the law. There's words of covenant. So, Lord, what specific words are you talking about? And what surprised me the most was none of the above. Now, all of the above are important. We have to know the word of God in order to be able to listen to our words. So we need the word of God to make sure we're lining up with the word of God. But he wasn't, wasn't saying to me that I wasn't looking at the word of God. He was speaking something personal to me. So to the best of my understanding, as I've listened to that, I'm saying, you know, I'm going through my mind. What could this be? What is the Lord trying to show me? To the best of my understanding, I have been using positive words. I'm making a positive confessions. Um, I, when, when led by the Lord, if there's a specific prayer I'm praying, I will actually write out a crafted prayer, a designed prayer around the word of God. Um, Whenever, whenever a, a thought of doubt comes in my mind concerning something I'm standing for, as soon as I recognize that, um, I try to pick up that sword of the spirit and give it a good thrust. So I'm like, I, I don't know what else of my words I'm not, my seed I'm not listening to. And I sensed in my spirit a, a word from the Lord that when I'm doing that, I am feeding my spirit man. I am really guarding that spirit man. I'm speaking the word into that spirit. I'm speaking the word into my spirit man to build my spirit man up. But that's not the only words I speak. Those are the words I speak when I'm thinking about it, when I'm in prayer or I'm, I'm talking to the Lord or I'm journaling or I'm reading or I'm studying. But what about the other 20 Two hours in a day, 23 hours in a day. What about the words I'm speaking then? And I went, oh, I get it. I have to listen to my seed. What words am I speaking? Because we really are body, soul, and spirit. And when we're speaking to our spirit man, we're building that up. But the words that we speak the rest of the time are entering into our mind. And our mind creates thoughts, and our thoughts create feelings. So words create thoughts, thoughts create feelings. Feelings then can want to have the propensity to lead you or guide you into what actions you take. So... Because words are attached to feelings, I think we need, the Lord is calling us into this place to be more attentive to the words we speak all the time. Um, that's a, we're looking at a biblical principle, the principle that a word is a seed and a seed sown will produce what is sown. So you can believe it or not, it's like gravity. You can throw something up and say, I don't believe it, but you better get out of the way because it's coming down. So you can believe it or not that words that you speak, even when you're not speaking particularly about a, um, making a, you're not making a necessarily negative confession, but just words that we're speaking have plant, are planted and will bring back a fruit. So the seed is in itself, and it will reproduce according to its kind. So I have a particular thing I want to get to today. Um, this, we're going to look at three different things that can affect how, we, how I am learning, and, and hopefully this is going to be helpful for you as well, learning to listen to my words. So this first part that we're going to cover today is um, how we phrase things. I'm going to particularly talk about the word don't. D-O-N-T, don't. So I'm going to say to you right now, don't think about going to the beach. Well, how did that work? 
probably, most likely, immediately when I said that, you thought about the beach. You pictured the beach here in Naples, you pictured a beach you've been to, even the umbrellas and the chairs and the water. So if I said, don't think about the next hurricane, it almost is instantaneous that you have a vision of the last hurricane we had and you begin to think what could happen in the next one. That's how our minds are created by God to work. So if you think about that hurricane, that, and I say don't think about it, you're going to think about it because that word don't created an image in your mind. And our minds are trained to focus in on what we actually hear. Your mind never heard the word don't. What your mind heard was think about the hurricane, think about the beach. Don't is a word we process right out of our minds the minute we hear it. So I want you to think about some of these statements because I made a list of the ways that I often use the word don't. Now, don't get mad. Oh, listen, I'm happy I'm, happy I'm talking to you. Don't hesitate to call me. Don't panic. Don't be late. Don't forget. Don't run with the scissors. One of my one of my big ones. Or a lollipop in your mouth. Don't slam the door. I'm just thinking of all the things I say that I preface it with don't. When I'm saying that, what the other person is hearing is not the don't. They're hearing everything but the don't. Go ahead, get mad. Please, hesitate to call me. Don't call me. <laughs> panic. This is a really good time to panic. You're always late. Be late. Forget. And what does a child hear when you say, don't run with the scissors? Run with the scissors. Don't slam the door. It's the first thing they do. So every time I say don't, not, or no, I am actually giving energy and attention to what I don't want. I am planting a seed. And that seed becomes a thought, and that thought evokes feelings. And it plants them in your mind, your will, and your emotions. So if that is the case, then what do I need to do? I need to ask myself, so what do I want? Because a negative and a positive emotion or feeling or thought cannot occupy at the same time. Either you're thinking a negative one or you're thinking a positive one. So I would like to challenge you to make your own list before the next visit we have here on video. Make your own list over the week. Every time you hear yourself saying don't, stop and think about it and write it down and see what the Lord would say to you about it to make your own list of don'ts. Now, if I don't want that, what do I want? So the challenge then, or I think what the Lord was saying to me, listen to your seed. How do you turn that seed into a positive? So I'm going to go back and look at my list again and see if I can change that a little bit. So instead of saying, don't get mad, I, actually, I can't think of any positive way to say that. So I'm eliminating that. I'm just eliminating that from my vocabulary. It's a statement I'm choosing not to make anymore. 
And then don't hesitate to call me. Now, if I really am inviting that person to call me, I want to help them, I want them to be in touch, then I should not say to them, don't hesitate to call me. I should say to them the positive statement because I want to plant a seed that will bring forth a positive fruit. I want to say to them, please call me when you need me. Call me when you want. Which one of those would you respond to if I said it to you? Don't hesitate to call me, or if I said to you, oh, please, call me whenever you need me, call me when you want. Don't panic. If there is a situation where something happens and somebody gets upset, it's like, stay calm. And I didn't mean panic in the sense that the house is on fire, but you know, every once in a while, uh, somebody, will, one of the kids will knock over a glass of water or a glass of milk and it goes all over and everybody jumps up and everybody's moving around and uh, something you might say is, let's don't panic over this. But, and immediately then that starts the panic. But if we can learn to make it a positive thing, you know, we're training our minds. None of these in and of themselves are critical, but we're training our minds to understand this principle. So when something gets upset and everybody's up trying to clean it up, one thing we could learn to say to ourselves, I'm trying to learn to say to myself, to say out loud is, oh, let's be calm. Let's just be calm. Be calm over this. It's just okay. It'll be all right. Let's just stay calm. And when you hear stay calm, what do you do? Ah, there's a nice little breather that goes down as opposed to don't panic, which makes us all want to jump up and run around. We're planting the positive. We're trying to train our minds to train our seed, our words, to bring forth what it is we want. So don't run with the scissors. An instruction is put the scissors down before you play. Put the scissors down before you get up from the desk. Walk the scissors to me, as opposed to don't run for the scissors immediately. What do you want to do? Get up and run. Now, if you think that um, this is not biblical, because that's what I wanted to say, is like, okay, Lord, what does this have to do with anything, and why are we learning this? And um, I don't, I don't know what the word is, but Paul clearly told us that when you say don't, that becomes a law, don't. And he said the law is what spurs us on. The law came to show us. In the minute there was a law then every, against anything, everybody wanted to do it. As soon as a, there was a law about don't step on the grass, as soon as that sign is on, you want to run on the grass. So this actually is a very important biblical principle. So if we do not train our words, which are our seeds, how to, what to do when it runs into that law that wants to make chaos or that law that wants to make us do exactly what the instruction says not to do, that's a pretty critical thing. So this is a down-to-earth, day-to-day thing we, I am learning to do. It has great reaching potential for bringing health, happiness, wellness, relationship, harmony into our life. But this is just the beginning. We're just talking about the beginning of it today. Learning to bring, to listen to our seed, to change the, how we would without thinking about it, make a negative statement which will bring forth a negative fruit or how we can learn to put that in a positive statement, planting a positive seed, and then bring forth a positive result. Where we're headed with this, to give you a little file folder as my term, a place to put this so you know what we're heading, is because when we make these statements of no and don't so readily in our everyday lives, what we don't realize is when we are making our positive confession, even though we're making a positive confession, our mind isn't always lined up with it, and in our head, 
our mind is saying something different to us than what we're saying out loud. Bottom line, speaking negative things, don't, can't, no, can actually be one of the root causes of how well or not well your hope is doing. And right now, I think we all need to be real anchored in positive, in the hope that says there is a positive, joyful outcome on its way. But if we're not listening to our seed, then we go, we may be looking at this psalm that says, hope deferred makes the heart sick because we're not hoping, we're not speaking the positive into that statement to bring out a hopeful expectation of a good outcome. So I hope that you will join me in this endeavor and make your list and then do as I have done try to rewrite that negative statement. How would you train yourself to say it in a positive way? And then next week we're going to put this together and practice it as building up our hope. Thank you. See you next week.